Uh, Legally Blonde 2. I gotta say, it's not as good as the first one, but it's not that bad. It does have some problems. We'll get into the problems. Um, but I think it has too low of a rating on IMDb. We'll look at the IMDb in a second here, but let's watch the trailer. The Legally Blonde collection is now on Blu-ray, I see. That's cool, I guess. Let's go. Yes. In America, there are those who make the law and those who make it look good. Reese, our girl, Elle. Woods found a perfect job. We're lawyers. We have to fight for justice. She is why this movie is still good, even though it's not as good as the first one. I can't believe I just said that. She's so good in the role. I don't think that was even in the movie. Capital. Washington, you fall asleep when we watch the West Wing. But have you seen what they're wearing? Too Nancy, too Hillary, too Monica, too perfect for words. <laughs> hmm. Patriots, I don't think I've been this excited since. Some of these parts aren't in the movie. Company. Oh my God, it's Capital Barbie. That definitely was in the movie, though. Oh yeah, Gail the Snail from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They just showed her for a sec. She's in this. I thought that was cool. I'm actually an old congressman from Delaware. I've been in Delaware, no sales tax. Good win, sir. You're out of order, Ms. Woods. She doesn't have the support. Perhaps you could look at my economics incentive chart. Let's pop up. But that was yeah, like, that's one cool. Woman. You know the I way think? they edited that was weird, too, because it was completely two unrelated scenes where that guy was, like, laughing, but she w he wasn't even in that room when she was doing that. I, I digress. I saw you. That woman wears a lot of pink. No. That woman can make a difference. Rebellion Luke Wilson. Challenge. You can't get the people to care. Watch me. I can't do this alone. I'm calling in reinforcements. Her pals. Celebrate the land of the free. Let's hit the hill. You look like a fourth of July. And of course, Jennifer Coolidge. Hot dog, real bad. Returns. Yeah, that's a big part of she wants a hot dog, I guess. What's wrong with that? They make that joke in the first one. This is definitely weaker than the first one. I still liked it. I still liked it though, kind of at least. Oh, you better get the party started. All right, so that was the trailer. I think you get the gist. Let's move it on over. Let's just pause it so it doesn't do anything else. And let's go to the IMDB page I have open here. And then we'll get into the, the basic plot and stuff. I have the Wikipedia also. Um, but yeah, f look at the rating. 4.7 out of 10. That's weak. That's low. I don't think it's that bad. I think it's... I mean, it's not. It's nowhere near as good as the first one. But it's kind of a fun sequel. The pacing is a little weird. Uh, the jokes don't hit as hard, I guess. But some of the jokes are pretty funny. Uh, there's some cringy ones, though. Specifically one that I'll mention. Maybe a little more than one, but one really cringy one, let's say. And I'll get into that in a bit. I definitely want to talk about that part. But yeah, let's look at these actors. Mary Lynn Radjskub is Rena. That's Gail the Scale. Gail the Scale. Gail the Snail, who is in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But um, yeah, Reese Witherspoon is so fantastic in the role of Elle Wood. Sally Field is the congresswoman. That makes sense. She's good, too. All the actors are pretty good. I have no problem with acting. Luke Wilson is good, as always. He's not in it as much, though. I, I could have used more Luke Wilson, honestly. He's, he's always a good actor to see and stuff. Um, but he's a little underutilized here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get into... You know what? Let's just keep going. I'm going to do all this part first, and then we'll get into the plot, and I'll start just talking about different stuff with it. But let's look at the box office return. So did it do decently? I think it probably did, because they made a third one, which I have on the list. We'll maybe review Legally Blondes, which is the third one, another day. Um, but yeah, budget $45 million. Opening weekend, $22 million. Not great for the opening weekend. But not that bad, really. And then the gross U.S. and Canada, $90 million, which is good compared to the budget. And then gross worldwide, $124 million. So it's not bad. You know, it made its money back and then quite a bit. 
So that's good. It did a good job in the box office. Um, let's look at the Wikipedia. So, Legally Blonde 2, Red, White, and Blonde, also referred to simply as Legally Blonde 2. It's easier to say, but... I mean, that is the full title, Red, White, and Blonde, to be fair. 2003? What? It's 2003? Really? Was it the, fir the first one? I thought the first one was 2000. Oh, let's look up. What year is the first one? That makes me curious now. Because I thought it was 2003. Legally Blonde year. Oh, it is 2001. Okay, never mind. I'm tripping. I'm straight tripping. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's 2003, this film. Uh, sequel to the 2001 film. It says it right here. I could have just kept reading. Uh, that's okay. Reese Witherspoon, who also served as the film's executive producer. That's interesting. They, she must have been like, hey, I was an integral part of that last movie. Give me a n another credit or something. Which is fair. Um, the plot, I'll go over with um, without reading the Wikipedia consensus. Or synopsis, I should say. Um, yeah, that's all we need to really look at with the, with the Wikipedia. We looked at the cast and all that. Um, but yeah, let's make my face bigger. And then I'll, we'll really get into this movie. Because I did like it. Like, I didn't. I enjoyed watching it. It was pretty funny, even, to start it off. There were some jokes that just didn't land that well, and I'll get into that. But, yeah, let's talk about the basic plot. So, our girl, Reese Witherspoon, if you remember from the last film, she just had gotten a job at a big law firm. That's how the movie ends, sort of, with the big successful... Her and Luke Wilson getting together and everything sort of going right in her life, including her getting hired at this law firm. But in this movie, we find out that, and you know, I like this angle of it. She has her dog bruiser, and this is kind of dumb, honestly, but I, you know, it, it leads to other integral parts of the plot, so I, I forgive it. Bruiser, her dog, her pet chihuahua, she wants to find his birth mom so that she can come to her wedding when she gets married to Luke Wilson, which, you know, it's kind of silly, but it works with her character, so, you know, I let it slide. Um, so they tr they hire a private investigator to find the mom, but they find out that the mom is in an animal testing facility, which, uh, for cosmetics, so, you know, this is sort of an anti-animal cruelty message in this movie, which is good. I'm, I'm for that. It makes enough sense, especially, again, with her character. It's something that she would believe in. And I do like how this sort of pivots into she's talking to her law firm. It's like, oh, we represent this uh, cosmetic firm that, that is testing all these animals. So maybe we can talk to them and reason it out. But first she talks to the people at the law firm and they're like, you know, we should care about what's moral. And, and they're like, huh, just because we're lawyers, we don't have to care about morals. And that, that's obviously a big uh talking point and question to to discuss when it comes to law it's like what is right what is what's the right thing to do is the law always moral no it's not always moral but that's why laws get changed and that is what leads me to the next thing where she goes to washington to work for this congresswoman played by sally fields uh, so she can make this bill called Bruiser's Bill, which basically illegalizes all animal testing on different cosmetics and that. So that's cool. Uh, that's the basic plot. I have no problem with the basic plot. Some of the pacing is a little weird. There's, it's a little bit too Bruiser focused. Like there's a whole other thing where they have Bruiser being gay. I don't think it's necessary. Maybe they were trying to be woke, but even that hasn't aged great because they're all like sort of looking at each other. And being like, because they're acting like it's a huge deal. And I guess for the time, maybe it was. But now it's just sort of like, okay, they're gay, whatever. But I digress. My point is that they didn't really need to put that in, I think. But maybe that was just them trying to be woke in the in the early 2000s, which I guess I can forgive. But it's a little bit of a nitpick. Anyway, moving on. Other elements of this this movie that worked... Uh, the comedy is generally funny. There is one joke that I have to talk about that did not work, in my opinion. 
Um, there's a doorman that Reese Witherspoon befriends in this film, and they start getting along really well. And there's a point where, and it sort of comes out of nowhere. And this is a bad joke. I did not like this joke. It was cringy. Um, out of nowhere, he calls her L Shizzle or something like that, like Snoop Dogg language. And then we, she's like, looks at him and they even do a take of Bruiser looking weird at him. And they're like, why did he say that? That's what we're all thinking. And he gives her back her iPod. And he's, he's like, oh, I just wanted to borrow this. So were to think that he was listening to Snoop Dogg. He stole her iPod and listened to the Snoop Dogg. Is this a stupid, unnecessary joke? They could have cut that. They didn't. Oh, well. Um, and yeah, lots of th the pacing is weird. A lot of times it's like, what's going on? It, it feels like all of a sudden, now that we're talking about the dog being gay, and then, oh, we got to get right back to the law stuff. And it just seems like we could have had a little more time for, like, Luke Will. We could have had some more Luke Wilson time to... To make more character development and build up to the to the end and, and make everything feel a little more even. But it just didn't feel that even to me uh, in those regards. But, this and it obviously, it's, the movie isn't going to be as good as the first one. I didn't think it was going to be. But it is kind of fun. There's some good jokes. And Jennifer Coolidge is always good. But everything just seems a little bit weaker. Um... It doesn't seem as powerful as the first one. Like, it really has some good moments in the first one where it's like a feminist classic. We have this strong female character going against the grain, which is, they're doing a similar thing in this one, but just not as good, in my opinion. Um, but it's still cool. Like, they tried to raise the bar with her making a law, and she's following her dreams. And I like that aspect of it. But... Yeah, there's just could the, some of the jokes could have been a little better, but it still is funny. Like I still kind of like this. It's just not gonna get my highest rating of all time. Uh, I want to look it up on Rotten Tomatoes, real quick. I'm just gonna look it up on this computer. Legally Blonde Two. Let's see. Um, I think it probably got really bad Rotten Tomato scores. Let's see though. They're usually pretty unkind to sequels on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's see, 36%. Ouch. And even the audience score is 23, which is even worse. Wow, I thought it would be better than the critic score. How wrong I was. Okay, I must be in the minority here, but I don't think this is that bad. I don't think it's that good either, but I don't think it's that bad. Um, I do kind of like this movie. But yeah, the whole thing with Bruiser being gay is just unnecessary. I guess there's some like kind of cute jokes in it, but it's just... Overall seems unnecessary. I guess that's sort of a plot line uh, to get Reese Witherspoon's character in cahoots with the owner of the other dog who is a senator. She needs to get these senators on her side for the bill. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Or congressmen or whatever. Political people. <laughs> she needs to get on her side. Uh, so I guess that makes sense. But it could have been something else. Oh, and another thing that... It, that I want to talk about. It's kind of funny, but it makes no sense. And like, it could have been written a little bit better. A lot of this movie just could have get, gotten written a little bit better, like the first one. But there's a, another one of the congresswomen or Congress people, whatever, that they're trying to get a hold of is this woman who they established like just to sort of hate uh, Reese Witherspoon because Grace, who is working for this this congresswoman that uh, Reese Witherspoon is also working with. But she's like her right hand lady, this Grace. She totally throws Reese Witherspoon under the bus to this other uh, congresswoman in the court or whatever in this hearing about a law. Because she's just like, oh yeah, you, you can come and learn at this hearing. But she speaks when she's not supposed to. But she doesn't know. It's not her fault, in my opinion. She, it was all Grace's fault. And of course they do the thing where... They're enemies at first, but they become friends, and the person you think is their friend is becomes their enemies. I kind of saw all that coming, and I don't want to ruin anything for people, but I don't think I am, because it, it was pretty obvious to me um, to see who was going to be the bad guy, who was going to be the good guy in the end. Um, even though in the, in the moment, it's like, fuck Grace. Grace is being a bitch. I don't like Grace. But she ends up being not that bad. <laughs> um, but... What I want was trying to lead up to is th there's a congresswoman that Reese Witherspoon's trying to get to support her bill, 
and she's trying everything she can, but her first approach is dumb because it's just, it's super preachy. She's just like, oh, all the animals they don't have the like they don't have uh, they can't speak for themselves and all this different stuff. Just very preachy, being like, we gotta stop the cosmetic animal testing. But then, cause she finds out where she is in a in a spa or a salon or whatever, and basically harasses her. And she's honestly, understandably kind of mad. Like, leave me alone. I'm just trying to get my hair did. Um, but she's also judging for her for an unfair reason just because she looks like a valley girl. That's like a lot of this movie. Everyone judges her, underestimates her, and she's really smart uh, and a strong, independent woman. But, yeah, Reese Witherspoon is trying to take home the message that, yeah, we want no more testing on animals for cosmetics. Um, but the woman... They happen to get sat right next to each other, and Reese Witherspoon sees that she has a Kappa Kappa new ring, which is her sorority. So even though she's really clearly mad at Reese Witherspoon, she's just like, oh, no, we're, we're Kappa Kappa new sisters, so all is forgiven, and we're best friends ever now. So yeah, whatever, it's fine, that has to happen, I guess, but I think it's a little silly. Um... It's kind of funny, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't. I don't love that part. It could have been again. It could have been written better. Lots of elements of this movie could have gotten written better. Um, so I'm just gonna keep jumping into parts that I think of until I can't think of any more parts that are noteworthy. Um, but at the end of the movie, they do the same thing as the first movie, where they have little captions over all the people at the end, like this is what happened to this person. This is what happened to this person. At the end of the movie, they do that in a lot of movies. But they have little jokes of, of what happened to everybody. Uh, and like and in this one, there's a scene where um, we have Jennifer Coolidge being like, oh, that makes me really want a hot dog or something. And that's the big joke. And then at the end, they're like, Jennifer Coolidge finally got her hot dog. And it's just like the jokes are just not as tight is what I'm, the, the point I'm trying to make as in the first one. Like every joke in the first one is like bang, 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 funny, solid, good. This is more hit and miss. Some there are some good jokes. And I laughed relatively steadily, honestly, through it. But there were a few where I was like, "Ooh," or just didn't laugh. Uh, and the first one was pretty solid all the way through with the laugh. So I gotta say that. Um, but what else to say about this movie? Yeah, it's the, I did sort of see it coming. I think with the with who the villains are and who, who <laughs> the friends become enemies, the enemies become friends, all that jazz. Um, but yeah, overall, this movie was not that bad. I don't think it was that good. It was clearly weaker than the first one. I'm, I'm curious how much worse the third one will be. Maybe it'll be better than this one, but there's no way it's better, going to be better than the first one. I mean, it's, that's a tough, tough bar to cross. Remember, I gave the first one 9 out of 10. It's absolutely excellent. Um, I think I will start to rate this one, and then we'll move on to the next film review but yeah legally blonde 2 here we have i was looking for my dry race marker here it is legally blonde 2 it's not perfect it could have been better the pacing's weird some of the jokes don't land some of the things just don't seem realistic but overall it's it's still pretty fun. oh there was one, there's something that i was going to mention that i totally forgot okay so at the end she wins, right? Spoiler alert, she wins. The bruiser's bill gets passed, so all animal testing becomes illegal, which I don't think that actually happened. But, you know, it's a movie, you let it slide, whatever. Um, but all animal testing is illegal in this universe. But then at the end, they show that all these corporations, they say that they let the dogs out, they release all the animals and test subjects because of pressure from the public. Not because of the law. So you could argue that the law is still pressure from the public. But I thought that was weird. That Maybe just lazy writing. They missed that or something. But I would have written it differently. That they, they released them because of the fucking law. That L passed. So I don't know. That's a little silly. But you let it pass. You let it slide. Jennifer Coolidge is good in this movie. Everyone's a pretty good actor. I, li I like all the characters. Um, it's pretty well utilized. Um, I like, I'm a sucker for a happy ending. I like the ending, you know, the happy endings, even though everything just seems a little weaker, a little lazier. It's, but if you really like the first one, like I did, you'll still enjoy this one. Just not as much as the first. So I'm going to give this 
Definitely not as good as the as the second one. I mean, as the first one. I'm gonna give it six. I think that's fair. It's not great, but it's it's got some good bits. Definitely a, a considerable amount worse than the first one, because the first one's like Citizen Kane. It's it's near perfect. It's excellent. So it's six out of ten dogs for Legally Blonde two. All right.